Hello everyone! Welcome to the Mudroom, our weekly Uncommon Sense parenting class. How is everyone doing? Welcome to July! I hope all of my Canucks had a good Canada Day, and I hope all of my Americans had a great fourth. It's a big weekend in North America, y'all. Lots of partying. My kids are officially done school. We're just settling into our summer routine, but so far so good. That said, Summer is just two short months, and I'm already getting questions from parents about their limbic leaping kiddos who are going to be starting kindergarten in the fall. Y'all aren't stupid. You can see that trouble coming down the pipe, so I figured let's start you off on the right foot now so that you can work on this all summer. Before we get into it, however, allow me to introduce myself. If we haven't met yet, hey, I'm Alana Robinson. I'm a parenting coach for parents of toddlers, preschoolers, and kindergartners, and I help you understand why your kids are misbehaving and how to fix it without stickers, counting to three, or losing your shit. I'm your host here on The Mudroom. I'm also the host of the Parenting Posse Facebook group, and I'm the creator of the Parentability Program, where I help you become the expert on your own kid. If you're watching, say hi, and don't forget to like and subscribe so that you never miss another class. Okay, so you've got a four-year-old. They're deep in the limbic leap. And everything new or unexpected is being treated like it's going to end them. If you're unfamiliar with the limbic leap, I'll give you a quick synopsis here, but I really suggest you go find my episode on the limbic leap and give about 20 minutes of your time to that because we go in a lot more depth there. But basically, around four, the part of our brain that is responsible for our safety, our amygdala, goes through this wild growth spurt. It triples in volume. And because of that, it's super sensitive and active, which means it lies to us and perceives anything new or unexpected as mortal danger. Your four-year-old literally thinks anything new that they weren't anticipating is going to kill them. It's not rational. The limbic system, which is where the amygdala is in the brain, has no access to reason. It physically cannot do that. So that means for four-year-olds, consistency and predictability are big fucking deals because those are the indicators that show them that they are safe. Anything new or unexpected is potential danger. Anything familiar or expected is old news. This causes a huge problem when you have large life changes in that four-ish year old year. And it's an unfortunate truth that often four-year-olds are experiencing big life changes like getting a new sibling, moving, or starting a new school. Parents often time these transitions specifically, like a three-year age gap is actually a really great spacing for kids, but that means that there's an infant in the house when you have a four-year-old. <laughs> often parents will specifically plan their move, especially big like cross-country moves, when their child is four so that it's before they officially start school. And then you have the fact that in many areas of the world, here included, children start kindergarten at age four or five, which is a huge shift from daycare. So new, unexpected things are often just a fixture of a four-year-old's life, and it's just really bad timing. <laughs> and clearly, the word about this is starting to spread because I have had a ton of parents realize in the last week or two that, oh my God, if school is ending, that means we're on the clock for school starting for my kiddo. And there's no way that they're ready. They're melting down all the time. They're being defiant. They're really struggling with the current situation. How the hell am I supposed to make kindergarten a positive experience for them? So let's talk about a few things that you can start doing now that will make September so much easier for both of you. The first is start exposing them to the new environment. Take them to the school and start playing in the yard a couple times a week. Walk around the building. If you can, see if you can just go walk the halls with them. Some schools are open to the public for events or camps during the summer, and you may be able to pop in. Just make sure that if there is a camp or something going on that you ask first. Start making the school building familiar by exposing them to it on a regular basis. Think of when you go to like a job interview or you're going to an event in an unfamiliar place, you probably scope it out first, right? If you're anxious like me, you probably show up way too early so that you can get the lay of the land. And if you're seriously type A, you might even do a dry run. There is nothing more anxiety inducing than feeling like anything unexpected might kill you. So do the dry runs. If you have photos of the inside of the school or you can Google photos of the inside of the school or you did a tour at some point and took some pictures, use those photos and make your child a picture book and talk about the school routine over the summer. 
I have a client whose son started kindergarten last September and she was completely blindsided with her son when he had a total destructive meltdown on the first day of school because his daycare was actually in the same building as the school. So she thought, oh, this is gonna be no big deal. But when he got off the bus and there was a stranger standing there leading him to the opposite side of the building, he freaked out because nobody had actually prepared him for that. He actually took a school bus to daycare. So he was expecting his old familiar comforting routine and suddenly he was being guided to a playground he never spent time in. He was being given new rules and responsibilities that he wasn't prepared for. He lost it. So talk about what will happen at school. Visit the environment if you can and make them as familiar as possible with it as you can. Second, practice the skills that they're going to need. Even if your child has been in daycare since infancy. In daycare, it's a care situation. The staff is expected and permitted to support your child in doing care tasks like keeping their track of their stuff, feeding them, helping them put their outdoor gear on, toileting, co-regulating, etc. In school, not only do they generally not have the staff available, available to support your child with those things, most classrooms have like one teacher to 15 students, right? Like here in Ontario, you've got one classroom teacher and one ECE to approximately 30 kids. So they don't have the manpower to support your child with those things. But they also aren't allowed to support your child with those things unless they have an IEP generally. They can't help your child in the bathroom. They often aren't allowed to touch your child's food. So your kiddo needs to be able to do these things themselves as much as possible. If they're self-reliant, they won't get danger signals from adults quote unquote withholding things that they need. When I was an early interventionist, I was in a kinder classroom with a little boy who was completely blind. And in Canada, children bring their lunch and their snacks to school and eat them in the classroom. And I remember the teacher shaking her head on the first day because I spent snack period helping all the typical kids open their snack containers while my little blind client easily opened his own because we had practiced. And think of it, a lot of these skills are basic needs. Children get panicked when they're hungry because that amygdala goes, oh my God, we have restricted access to food and we're so hungry and we're going to die. Or if they need to pee and they can't get their own pants off, they rightfully panic about wetting themselves. Or if everyone is heading out to recess and they can't get their shoes on, they panic about being left behind. So you want to work on those skills so that they aren't in a situation where their lack of skill is going to create a feeling of being unsafe. These include toileting independently. If your child can't get themselves on the potty yet or they can't wipe their own butt, now is the time to start working on that. Opening and closing their own lunch and snack containers. Serve them their lunch and snacks in the containers or bento box that they will be using at school. Buy them now. They're cheaper now anyways. Practice putting their own shoes on and off, both indoor and outdoor shoes. Most schools require children to change their shoes in the building. Two adults cannot be helping 30 children put shoes on and off three to five times a day. If your child can't get their shoes on or off by themselves, get different shoes. Slip-ons are the best. Putting their own jacket on and zipping it up. Again, two adults, 30 kids. Practice the zipper and any other outdoor gear that they may need. Canadian moms, we're trying on snowsuits in August anyways, right? Yes, I know if you live in the South, that sounds insane, but snowsuits go on sale in September and are usually sold out by November. And the closer you get to snow, the more expensive they get. So we're trying on their suits anyways. Get them to do it up. Don't help them. Packing their own bag. Kids have a lot of stuff to remember. Lunch bags and note totes and hats and mitts and neck warmers. Practice putting all those things into their bag and shutting it and getting it on their own back. Identifying their own name is another really important one. They don't have to be able to write their own name, but they need to recognize it by sight. If you have a child with a vision impairment, start practicing recognizing their name in Braille. I'm sure there's a lot more, but those are the big ones. And if they can do those things, then it's much less likely that they'll be in a situation where they feel unsafe because they're relying on a stranger who is way outnumbered to meet their basic needs, which means they're gonna stay way calmer. 
Third, identify and start practicing their weak executive skills every day just for 10 minutes. Because those executive skills are the tools that we use to do literally everything. And as I said, in daycare or at home, the adults in their lives often really compensate for their weak skills. That will not be the case in school. The demands on their skills are at a much higher level in an educational setting, which means they'll have to use those skills much more frequently. And weak skills require a lot of energy to use. So while they might have been fine using their working memory three times an hour in daycare, if at school they have to use it six to seven times an hour, that's gonna drain their energy way faster. And depleted children are dysregulated children. That's the primary reason for children having massive behavior events at school. Their skills are weak compared to the demands that are being put on them. And when we're low on energy, when we're depleted and therefore dysregulated, our body is going to prioritize safety over everything else. And if everything new and unexpected is considered danger, can you see the perfect storm that that creates? So one of the most impactful things you can do to make your child's transition to school easier is to give them a jumpstart on practicing those skills. The more we use a skill, the easier it becomes, just like anything, right? The more you do it, the more familiar it becomes, the faster and easier it is to do. So identify their weak spots and practice using those skills every day. Now, if you don't know how to do that, I strongly suggest you come and join us in parentability because that's what I guide you through. First getting your child regulated and then identifying the skills that are dysregulating them and making those skills stronger. Calm, competent kids are well-behaved kids. And if you have concerns about your child's ability to stay calm or to use their executive skills at the level that schools demand, then the time to start working on those is now, not in September. If you wait until September, you're already playing catch up. Get in front of it now. Be proactive about it. If you'd like to learn more about parentability, I have a free class that's available at the link in the description and will explain how all these factors interact in a bit more depth so that you can make an informed decision about if that's the best fit for your family. And if the way that I do things and teach these things makes sense, you'll have the opportunity to join us immediately after the class. You can find that at alanarobinson.com slash free class. It's all one word. So I hope that you feel a little bit more prepared now to prepare your four-year-old for their transition to school. If you start now, you'll be in a fantastic place by September. Any questions you have about how to apply this to your family or any of the concepts I mentioned in this episode, come join us in the Parenting Posse and we'd be happy to support you. Have a great first full week of July, y'all. I'll see you next week for another Uncommon Sense Parenting class. Bye!